Yo, what's going on guys? Horcrux here. Welcome back to the channel and before we begin today's video, as always, a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters and everyone who checked me out on stream today. Thank you so much for helping me put this build together. So without further ado, I have some clips for you guys. So here we go. Welcome back, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the clips. I tried to include a few of the uh, the combo plays with uh, Dark Convergence. You can probably tell from the clips what set we're running. You know, spoiler alert. But I tried to include a few of those combos in here as well as the kit performing well by itself without the procs. So let's go ahead and get into the build, fellas. So here's the character sheet. Everything completely unbuffed. I did not mean to do that actually, <laughs> but uh, you saw we got up to 5400 spell damage with continuous attack. This gets up to 5900 spell damage. We have 2000 crit resist on our back bar. Our resistances are looking nice and juicy at 26k spell resistance, 22k physical resistance. Magic recovery is 1600. This bumps up to 1800 with continuous attack, which is more than enough since we have dark conversion iron bar. 44k max magica means we have a pretty beefy wards as well. So we're running high elf with a bewitch sugar skulls and the mage mundus. Now let's go ahead and get into the bread and butter of the build, guys. You already know it. So we're going to go ahead and start with the restoration staff of conversions. I'm abusing this while I can. So on tooltip, it doesn't look very high. I want you guys to keep in mind that this is 18k tooltip without a lightning staff, without Malakanth, and this is without a weapon damage or our entire burst combo lined up. This goes up to about 25k. Uh, with continuous attack, I think it even goes even higher. I didn't check out the numbers for that, but it does hit over 25k. One of my previous iterations of this build, I had this hitting at 31.5k. Uh, damage but i found that sustain was a little bit lackluster on that so i did change the build up quite a lot not gonna lie guys this was a tough build to, to really nail down i had to spend a whole day farming uh, sithis so yeah enjoy i really committed for this one guys i spent the the past four hours on stream also play testing it and took some hints and some tips from my viewers and kind of adjust the build accordingly and this is what I came up with. So if you guys don't know what Dark Convergence is, it's pretty much a proxy day on steroids. Uh, it's a five piece you get from the serial rewards. So we're running this on our back bar only. So we have the net set we're running is Crafty. I'm starting at the bottom and working my way to the top. We're running Crafty. I tried Desert Rose. I tried Iron Blood. And I feel that Crafty is the nice medium between having enough damage and also having big enough size wards for our defensive actions. And then in addition to having a big enough wards, you know, this helps us with our neutral game and not just our huge burst combo from dark convergence. 
which scales only off spell damage, but our spell damage is incredibly high, as you saw, so the proc is pretty high as well, even not having Malakanth. We don't really need it. I do have all recovery on the jewelry during stream for the first couple of hours. I was struggling with Desert Rose because you have to roll dodge a lot on this build because we're running a Sithis. I'll go over what Sithis is there in just a minute. So yeah, we have impin on everything, or it should be rather crafty. Uh, five on the body, a uh, running five light, one medium, one heavy. We have one medium Dama House impin, and then we have Gaze of Sithis. Now the Gaze of Sithis is an absolute must for this build. You're too squishy without it. I tried running other iterations of this build, and I like I said. <laughs> I come to the conclusion, well, I just had to have it, so I spent all day yesterday, and luckily, uh, I only had to do 16 runs of Cradle of Filth, but uh, I finally got it, so it gives you 4,000 armor, gives you uh, 1,000 health recovery, gives you uh, 3276 uh, health, which is much needed, because my previous iterations, I just felt a little too squishy, and this completely covered my weaknesses, so I'm super happy with this build, I've had so much fun with this, especially on stream, uh, you guys can check that out, it's in my, my live videos. And the last set we're running is Master's Perfected Inferno Staff. This is, uh, we, I haven't Nurn Honed, you can either run Nurn Honed or Sharpen. Entirely up to you. I messed up on my enchantments. Uh, the front bar enchantment needs to be a charge enchantment. That, that's my bad. But essentially, this gives us 700 raw spell damage for a burst. So we don't have super high spell damage all the time, but we have the spell damage for the proc when we need it. As you guys saw, we had 5,500, and then with continuous attack, it goes up to around 5,900. So we'll... Our tooltips on our process are incredible, even without Malakans. So, this is this is tough, guys. I really wish Sorks had the third bar. It was hard to squeeze everything I needed into these this bar setup. But here is after many hours of playtesting, this is what I come up with. So you need Crystal Frags, definitely need Haunting Curse, you need Flame Clinch. Please use Flame Clinch because you do need a soft CC for like your neutral game. If you're on controller as I am, it's very hard for your neutral game combos to streak in 180 frag. If you're on controller, even if you mess around with your user settings and turn your sensitivity way high, it's still difficult. So it's nice having Flame Clinch as a soft CC and it also gives us the spell damage we need for our proc set. And then we're using Force Pulse as our spammable. I know some people use Flame Clinch as a spammable, but it just doesn't do the damage. It's, it, it probably does like 40% less than what Force Pulse does, and you do need a pretty decent spammable after your burst combo. So, we're back to our roots. We're using Flawless Dawnbreaker. Now, you can use the other Dawnbreaker, but the reason I'm using this one is because it does give you an additional 300 spell damage, and this applies to your proc set, this applies to your entire burst, so, and then it, at level 4, it gives it to you for 20 seconds. So this is just a nice neutral game to have since we don't need any more suns. We already have Streak. We already have Flame Cleanse. We already have Dark Convergence. We don't need another CC on the bar, so we're going with Flawless Dawnbreaker to give us more of the passive spell damage. Back bar. So Dark Conversion is here for a quality of life. If you're a Huber and it's on your stamina pool, spam Dark Conversion to get some of your magic back. Using Hardened Ward. Okay. And rapid regeneration. So I tried using healing ward, not a big fan. I tried using dampen magic instead of dark conversion. I was using rapid regen, and you're plenty tanky enough just having a hardened ward and rapid regeneration on your bar. I, I, this is all you need because you're going to be rolling quite a bit. And luckily, we have the CP tree that gives us passive roll dodge mitigation as well I'll, I'll explain that it's actually a phenomenal phenomenal cp passive so we have this so we have bound the storm again for our defensive buff our major resistances and plus it gives you major expedition for a few seconds after activating and then daedric minefield is what we're using to proc our dark convergence it hits super hard it double dips into the cp tree i think it might actually triple dip this hits so hard so a rule of thumb, when you're using Daedric Minefield to proc Dark Convergence, it always puts it on the front uh, rune here. And this is really good, actually. I thought originally it would put it in the center, and that would be the best. No. I, after watching the clips and seeing how everything transpires, it could not place it in a better position. It places it in the front here, so most people you're kiting are going to be behind you. So when it pulls them into you, they're going to hit two, sometimes three of your mines. And that alone can one-shot a lot of the under-level, you know, under-skilled players, you know, just by itself. It's pretty phenomenal. And another thing to mention, Daedric Minefield got a nerf a little bit. So 
they nerf the cooldown how long they actually can last on the ground. So notice it's 15 seconds now. And take a look at Dark Convergence. It's also on a 15 second cooldown. So me being a console player, it was really hard for me to gauge whether or not I have another burst combo ready with Dark Convergence. So if you have your ability bar timer enabled, you can see down the bottom right -hand corner, Daedric Minefield, how it has a timer. Well, this timer perfectly lines up with your Dark Convergence proc, so you know exactly when you're able to drop this again and go in for your burst combo. So even though it was nerfed, it was nerfed in such a perfect way for this build. I absolutely love it. And then we had Temporal Guard on the back bar just for the passive mitigation. I tried using the Life Giver um from the restoration staff skill line and i just got destroyed anyway so uh, i'm just going more of the neutral game with the temporal guard plus there's a lot of outplay potential if you need to relocate as especially works really well on sorcerer uh, the potions that we're running if you notice we don't have a source of major sorcery nor a crit we are running the alliance spell drought pots so this gives us our major sorcery and also our crits on both of our bars. Not that we really need on a back bar so much, but it does give us everything we need along with our major intellect, which increases our recovery as well. So let's go ahead and get into the CP trees. So I made a mistake in my last video and said that you should be putting your passive points into unassailable. I take that back. You actually need to go into staving death and put them into ironclad. This pretty much does everything unassailable does, uh, plus more. So you're better off putting points into here instead of uh, this passive. The other three I've opted for is your deadly aim, biting ore. Uh, this is just for the dark convergence proc. This doesn't work with mines. I've tested it. And then also master at arms. Uh, mines double dips into master at arms and also deadly aim, just FYI. Um, apparently I don't have, <laughs> I've been running around with only, uh, three of these passive then, so that would possibly explain a lot. So the very first passive in the red tree that you need is sustained by suffering. This gives you recovery when affected by a negative effect, which is pretty much all the time. You need shield master. This increases damage of your heart and wards. You need bastion, which, Oh wait, this increases the effectiveness of your hard wars. This just reduces the cost of it. And then Arcane Alacrity. While under the effects of a damage shield, your dodge rolls cost 800 less. This is absolutely massive, guys. I can roll dodge so much. So my kind of rule of thumb, I will hard and ward roll dodge, rapid regen roll dodge, hard and ward roll dodge, and no one can catch up with you. It's phenomenal. I, I actually can't believe I didn't have this slotted earlier. That's... uh. It's a big boo-boo. Oopsie. But anyway, the build performs just well without it, apparently. Um, before, okay, that pretty much does it for the build. But if you stick around this long, I want to kind of show you the burst combo as soon as I get uh, the downbreaker build up here. So while I'm getting mold build up, I just want to thank you guys for watching the content. If you're not currently subscribed, please do your boy Horcrux a favor and subscribe to the channel. It helps keep me motivated. It helps the channel grow. I've gotten 200 subscribers here in the past like week and a half. That's absolutely phenomenal for the channel. About 10, I pretty much increased my entire YouTube channel by 10%. The streams have been really fun. And again, I appreciate all my Patreon supports. You guys are absolutely amazing, especially that drunk guy who has the biggest tier of Patreon support. I, I could not do this without you guys, really. So if you made it this far, here's the basic combo that you guys want to have obviously you have all your buffs up you want to have a curse on your target okay you want to have a curse on your target you want to drop your mines boom donnie streak okay do all that a little bit faster than what i did i tried to slow it down a little bit just so you guys can see what's going on but this gives you the best coverage you can get for your burst. And what I mean by that is you have your curse on your primary target. You're going to have your dark convergence set up. Okay. You're going to use your flame clinch to get your spell damage proc. And then you're going to immediately dawn break your streak. So about this time, they're coming out of their CC immunity. They're going to roll dodge. So you need to be able to hit them. So curse is going to hit them. Dark convergence is going to hit them. Donnie's going to hit them because it's in a cone, and then you're going to streak, which also hits them. And anyone who's left over, hopefully you have a frag proc, and you just toss it at them in a, in a 180 fashion. And that's pretty much the big dick combo. And your basic combo is just curse, flame clinch. If you have a frag, throw it, boom, boom, streak, you know, whatever. You, you guys get the basic combo. But when it comes to 
the actual dark convergence combo. I'll go over it one more time. Try to do a little bit faster, obviously. And if you do it quick enough, everything does line up at the exact same time, and it's just a really crispy burst. Thoroughly enjoy it. Alright, so. Boom. Everything explodes. It's so nice, guys. Everything hits at once. It's very difficult to live this. It really is. It's going to put most people at a third health, if not kill them, even if they're super tanky and if they're solo. And the more people you have, the better. So hopefully you guys like the build. Uh, if there's anything you want to change, or let me know down in the towel section, and I will get back. I'll try my best to respond to every single comment that we have. So again, guys, thank you for watching to the end of the video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.